You are listening to the DistressedPro.com professional interview series, where we bring you actionable advice from professionals on the front line of today's real estate and mortgage note market. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Distressed Pro Professional Podcast Series. And in uh, this series, what we do is we enter, interview, I interview real professionals who are out there in today's market uh, making it happen. And today, I'm very happy to have back again, uh, Mike Carey. Mike Carey, what's your title over there at Trends on these days, Mike? Senior Vice President of Hyphen Sales. Perfect. So uh, Mike Carey over at Trends on Auction Properties. Trends on, if you don't know, uh, it is a nation not, nationwide network of a real estate auction and also some brokerage uh, uh, company. And it's who I used to uh, work with uh, covering the Southern New England territory. And uh, Mike and I together, we've sold, I don't know, Mike, together, a lot of stuff. What we, were on, we were on a roll there for quite a few years um, right after the crisis, so yeah. Office properties, uh, um, uh, condo developments, subdivisions, gas stations, hotels. Remember that, remember that development deal up in the, the Worcester suburbs? Yes. That was fantastic. It's like an age-restricted deal? Yes. Yeah. That, was a, that was the thing for a while. Everybody wanted to, you had to do these uh, age-restricted deals and then all of a sudden and all of a sudden that wasn't a good idea. You yep. know, it turns out old people don't want to live in Massachusetts. Right? <laughs> turns out old people don't want to live with old people. <laughs> true, true story. Um, but Mike is probably one of the most experienced folks I know uh, in working with institutional sellers of specifically commercial property. He's been uh, on all sides of commercial real estate, uh, default, delinquency, and foreclosure sold plenty of commercial notes, has brought the gavel down at, for uh, commercial foreclosure auctions, has sold commercial REO for big banks, for small community banks, for hedge funds, for, uh, what am I missing, insurance companies probably, like virtually anyone who owns real estate or real estate debt. Am I yep. right? Correct. Yeah. So I asked him to come on here today because if um, if you've looked up uh, recently, you know that commercial real estate is in a really weird place right now as a result of uh, COVID-19 and uh, all that goes with that. And so I asked Mike to come on here and talk about a couple of things. First thing we want to talk about today um, is I want to talk a little bit about selling a commercial property at auction and sort of the differences. You know, a lot of people think about uh, foreclosure and they think about like a court, courthouse steps, you know, and you, you walk out there and you get $5,000 in your pocket, it's sight unseen and bing, bang, boom, and you don't know what's happened and the, the property's sold or maybe it isn't. Um, and that's not the kind of auction that Mike runs. Um, and so I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, about that and the difference of what goes into uh, maximizing the sale, especially on a very defined time frame. After that, uh, we're going to talk about just a couple of uh, strategies, maybe a couple of war stories and what we're seeing right now, what Mike's hearing in the market. Um, and so with that, let's kick it off, Mike, and tell us a little bit about um, if we could just start with sort of dispelling that foreclosure auction um, idea for, for anyone who's you know, not been involved in a real sales like, like you do. Yeah, I mean, you know, you alluded to, you know, we do a variety of different things from a consulting basis to a sales basis to a brokerage basis. Um, and I mean, our core business is the marketing of assets in less than 90 days. Uh, and our clients are, you know, they, you, they, they have to have some sort of time anxiety. Uh, if they don't have time anxiety, if you have time on your side, you don't need me. I bring no value to the transaction for you. Um, you know, and so that historically business has come from institutional sellers who look at those things and say, look, we have a core business that's way over here that has nothing to do with what, what this is. We don't want to own this. Like, we want to make sure that we expose it to the market. We want to make sure we've done a good job. Um, 
finding buyers and we want to use a process that helps maximize value as much as possible. Um, and at the end of the day, our goal is to sell. I mean, all things being equal, if, if it's close, uh, we're going to say yes. Um, and so, you know, when we, well, that's what we do. Uh, I had the pleasure when I first got in this business of um, finding myself in an interesting position where we had a, a relationship with a, a federal lender and uh, they had a portfolio of uh, loans that had really been charged off, but there was collateral and personal guarantees and a variety of other things that were still associated with it. And in, in that, I, I literally was handed files, um, would start basically with a title search to make sure that the, the lien still existed and find out what else was on it. And then, I mean, from there I would, I mean, take hundreds of files and I would work down to maybe eight to 12. Um, and then I would literally get on a plane and rent a car and I'd go drive around West Texas for a week. And I would knock on people's doors and say, hey, you know, we, you own this asset. We have this very old lien that's not extinguishable. And, you know, the good news is somebody's here to help work it out. Um, some of those ended up being workouts. Some of them ended up being, you know, lump sum payments. Uh, some of them ended up being completely dead ends. Uh, some of them ended up being foreclosures or note sales. Uh, and with that, it was really interesting because I got to do, I mean, I, I did foreclosures in a 18 month period. I, I, I managed foreclosures in 30 states. Wow. Uh, and so I got a real understanding for the process in each state, which is dramatically different. Um, California versus Maine to get as far away as you possibly can get. Um, dramatically different processes, dramatically different standard operating procedures. Um, and what I learned was that in that process, there is some flexibility. You have to meet the legal requirements. You know, there's kind of a minimum legal requirement no matter what you do. But if your goal is to not own something at the end of a foreclosure process, um, there are ways that in any jurisdiction that you can at least try to make sure that you have buyers who are well informed. I was just working on another article myself, um, you know, because I got a call from a, an appraiser, you know, and, and, and they said, hey, what's the discount for auction? And I hear that and it, it makes me, it just makes me cringe. Sure. You know, I'm like, I just want to like reach through the phone and strangle people. And, and I'm like, look, there's no discount for auction. Like the process is the process. Auctions, the, the auction process has been around for thousands of years, you know, um, and people pay more than fair market value. I don't know how you want to define fair market value, but like, let's just to use your vernacular. Uh, I said, what people discount for is people discount for lack of information, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and sometimes people can discount for cash. Sometimes people can discount for quick clothes, like, you know, and as a seller, you, you know, you have this kind of like, I have these demands that are over here. These are the things that matter to me. Price is one of them. Timing is one of them. Process is one of them. You know, and, and if you can, is, you're never going to get them all met, maybe, but probably not. But if you can get as many as you need met, then you win. And so if time is important to you, you may have to sacrifice price, you know, and but you don't necessarily have to sacrifice all the price because if you can get people information, they can be informed purchasers. You know, if you don't have, you can't get people in buildings, if you can't get them rent rolls, if you can't get them historicals, if you can't get them environmental, if you can't get, you know what I mean? Then yeah. yes, they're going to discount because we all would discount. You don't know what you're buying at that point. And so you have to build in some concessions for the unknown. Sure get a price of the uncertainty. And that's one of the things that I feel like uh, trains on in particular is always done a really good job at and should take pride in is the sort of laying the information bare before, you know, all of the, you know, the potential market for it. Yeah. I mean, we work really hard to front load what would be a typical post contract due diligence period. Right. So talk just a little bit about that, because I think that due diligence piece is something that, you know, that really scares people. They say, well, I'm going to show up and I'm going to have to put this non-refundable deposit down. I don't get to find anything out about this sale. I don't, you know, um, but that's not really how you guys tend to operate. And that's not really how you get the best price at a sale like that, is it? 
No, and I mean, you know, we work for the seller, we work for the mortgagee in a foreclosure situation, you know, the lender. Um, that being said, I spend most of my time waiting on buyers, yeah. um, you know, and being a service person and trying to get questions answered and trying to find out what's important to them. And, and I mean, I just had a transaction for a coastal property, a commercial coastal property that, that was tenanted. Um, and, you know, it's, it, this was simple. It's as simple as I got in the car and I drove to the property and I met with the tenant. And I said, look, here's the circumstance. Here's what we're dealing with. Do you want to stay? Do you want to go? What's your plan? Are you paying rent? Have you been paying rent? Oh, you, you're withholding rent right now, but you're willing to pay rent in the future. Like, you know, are you okay if I do some open houses? Can I get people walked through? You know, can we do these kind of things? And it, it, I mean, that was a, that worked out well. Um, it came together well. They were cooperative. Um, we sold it to an investor who's going to keep them as a as a tenant. You know, we had eight bidders at the auction. Uh, yeah. There are some things, I mean, I won't, can't promise it, you know, you've been around. There are some things that sometimes you can't answer. Um, you know, there are, there are um, disputes, there are legal challenges. Um, there's a question about validity of a lease and when it was recorded. I mean, some of that is, yep, you know, and, and in that circumstance, what you do is you tell people, this is what I know. Um, this is what we don't know. And obviously you need to prepare accordingly. Yeah. So what would your advice be to somebody who, you know, I'm hearing from a lot of family offices and different investors and folks are, their ears are really perking up in, especially in the commercial front um, these days. And so what would you say to somebody who's eyeing, um, you know, maybe they want to get back in the game as they see prices changing a bit here and they want to contact somebody like you or they're thinking about maybe they want to bid at an auction? Yeah, I mean, um, I think the first piece is, as with all, all welcome to real estate, like you got to know the market a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. and, unless you're talking, you know, triple net ground lease style properties, which is what everybody wants because you don't have to think about it, you know, and so the spreads are tight. Um, but if you're into it and looking at it, trying to, to find yield uh, someplace, then you're going to need to, to work a little harder to do that. Uh, you're going to have to pick off some properties that are in secondary and tertiary markets potentially. Um, and, and those opportunities are out there. Uh, and as we've just talked about, it's really about making sure that you're comfortable with the full picture as best that you can be. You can't eliminate all risk. Um, yeah. And and, 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 and asking the right question. So um, you need like all good things in the world. You need a good team. Um, yeah. You know, you need to know that you have boots on the ground that can handle real property because um, somebody's going to call you that the air conditioner is broken. You know, you need to know that you have a good leasing agent uh, who can help you work through those scenarios when they come up. And you need to have good legal representation who can look at you in a practical standpoint and say, yeah, you've got risk. Yet there's a lot of opportunity here and I think you should take advantage of it. Yeah. I think one of the biggest differences that in my experience with you and, and uh, the trans on team between the commercial foreclosures and those types of auctions versus the residential is the access. I mean, it's pretty, pretty rare that like, you know, we're not knocking on homeowners doors and walking people around, <laughs> walking people around the home before we foreclose on it. But that's not actually the case on in commercial real estate, is it? No, I mean, you know, not, nine out of 10 times, uh, you can arrange for access. And either you can arrange for access via legal means because you, you know, have the right to access or- Within, you can arrange within for a loan document, it says, we, we, we have the right to access this in yep. this case, yeah. Yep, yep. Or you can arrange for access by being a nice person. <laughs> that's you a know? novel idea. <laughs> You know, and asking. Um, and, and again, I mean, look, people can say no, uh, they can make life difficult, but at the same time, um, you know, there's something to be said for uh, removing the, you know, I mean, you know, a good attorney will tell you never talk to your distressed borrower. Like at the same time, I mean, if you're in, if you're not a, a national lender, you, you know, you, you have more flexibility uh, in that process than than Wells Fargo does, I, just to pick one, you know? Yeah. Um, and so- tell me, tell me a little bit about why that is. Why do you say that? Because why? you, 
Because you're not beholden to a stock price. You're not mm -hmm. beholden to a variety of regulators um, yeah. who are, are prepared to audit your files at any given moment and will. Um, yeah. You know, you also don't necessarily have the world's deepest pockets. And so from that perspective, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the dollars and cents that people see when they are like, oh, I'm going to take so-and-so national bank to court, you know, there's no purpose in taking me as an individual note investor to court. I don't really have much that you can get, you right. know? Um, and then you also have more flexibility on terms and timing, price, uh, process, you know, some, you know, back to cash for keys, uh, reduced rents, you know, stay here and just keep an eye on it. Here's a rental agreement, you know, just, just let's work that out. Um, you know, and that's the, that's the grinding work that it takes to find the extra to 10, 200%. Yeah. Um, so you're bringing a commercial property to auction. Um, uh, I call you up beforehand. I say, uh, I want to buy the note. What do you tell me? I say, that's a, I, I love that idea. Uh, depending on the circumstance, um, yeah. you know, I mean, some of it's very dependent on on who my client is. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just you, uh, I'm going to roll the war story. I mean, I, I earlier this year, um, pre COVID, um, not quite. I mean, pre when everybody was freaking out about COVID. Um, yeah. So it was January and February. Yeah. Um, I had a transaction going on that was a foreclosure um, for a mixed use building, restaurant, and apartments, and a little bit of retail, uh, and a great city and was actually a hard money lender that I was working for. Uh, it was a short term loan that, that, that uh, had matured um, and was in default. Um, and we were approached by a, a regular bidder, frankly, of assets. And he said, hey, can I buy the note? And I said, yeah, it's an interesting question. Let me find out. Um, and the answer eventually was yes. Uh, candidly, there was not much discount really negligible uh, it was yep. probably as close to a part transaction as i've ever done and you know this this note purchaser was looking he wants to own the building you know yep. and he's now he doesn't own it yet it's been nine months six you know eight months um variety of things have happened since then i don't know that it, it, with or without COVID, it would have made much of a difference mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, he's either going to have a very nice loan that gets paid off and he makes a little bit of money on it, uh, or he's going to have a building that he's happy to own. Right. You know? and, and I think that's one of those lessons, too, is, you know, when I had uh, one of my previous lives, I was an instructor for Outward Bound, and we would spend a lot of time mapping out expeditions, you know. Um, and what, what was always great was that, you know, you build these great plans, you spend days and days and days working on it. And, 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 and inevitably, in the first 36 hours, you were like behind schedule, somebody yeah. was hurt, sure. like, you know, it just, and you, so you, you got to have a plan B, like what's plan B if we can't make our marks, you know, and I think that's similar in this business is that like, what's your plan B? Mm -hmm. You know, it's great, you're planning to work this out with your, with you're going to buy a note, you're going to restructure it, you're going to extend, you're going to renegotiate, you know, interest rates, dot, dot, dot. What happens when that doesn't come together? Right. You know? uh, yeah. So. I think that very often I get the question, you know, what's, what's the discount on notes? What should I, you know, what am I going to get for a discount on, on the, yeah. on the, I'm like, I don't know, or what, how much should I pay is, you know, a, another question. So, I don't know. Um, <laughs> And the answer is, I think, speaking to what you're talking about, is you, you really have to have sort of a, a, a range of, like you have to look at possible scenarios and figure out, you know, on the, on the real bad side, you know, here's where we could end up, or if everything goes peachy, you know, we're over here. And are you comfortable sort of living in that, in that range? Because yeah. there are going to be unknowns. Yeah, I mean, I have a... a... I do a lot of work for bankruptcy trustees and uh, they have the weirdest stuff to sell sometimes. I don't do much of that, but there are, they have uh, some buyers who, who will buy almost anything, e equity, receivables, 10th of a share of an LLC. I mean, just yeah. weird stuff, you know, or judgments. Yeah. Um, and 
the folks I know that are buyers of those things, my experience with them is that they diversify. They just have enough balls in the air at mm -hmm. any one moment that like when they pay $5,000, $50,000, $500,000 for something, that they have enough other things going on that if that thing ends up being a total dog, they're like, well, it's okay. We lost on that one, but we made, you know, we did great on Apple. And so like our stock portfolio is still fine. And that, I, I think that that business premise of making sure that, you know, if, if your access to capital is a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million dollars, you don't want necessarily to put that money all in the same spot. Yeah. So you go mentioned. buy as much as you can at 20 grand, yeah. you know, each. So you mentioned hard money lenders, you mentioned private investor a couple of times. I wonder if we could just kind of touch on maybe a couple of strategies that you've seen from the kind of folks who you're doing some more regular business with. I mean, there's the institutional seller side, right? But then there's all the guys, gals, funds, firms who are buying um, that stuff. Talk a little bit about, um, and I know you and I have been involved in, 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 with folks with a number of different strategies, but maybe just touch on kind of what you're seeing a little bit these days, if you can. Yeah, no, I mean, all sorts of things. Um, I mean, just overall, I, I will say that um, there's not, there, there is no current wave of distress hitting my desk, our desk from lenders that we usually work with. There it's are. interesting because I have seen way more emails in my inbox <laughs> from, from you lately with sales. Include, don't you have a big na nationwide sale going on as we speak right now, isn't that right? So there's what, what, what we're experiencing in the, we always, you know, we always experience fourth quarter bump no matter what. Yeah. Like that is normal. It's a normal part of our business. Unfortunately, it's not as predictable as anybody would like, but it exists and it usually happens. Yeah. You know? um, then we're also... There was a variety of distress. We had our busiest first quarter from a distress period this year than we have in the previous four, maybe five years. Hmm. Um, it was pre-COVID, pre-lockdown. Pre-COVID, exactly. So pre-COVID, there was more on the books from banks, pure banks, community and national banks than we had had in many, many years. Um, and so to me, that was, it was pretty clear that there were some deals hitting skits. Yeah. Um, and then COVID came in and then it was really a pretty hard stop uh, for 60 days. Um, a few things have trickled through since then, um, mostly um, smaller commercial uh, and mostly things that, you know, are essentially jingle mail. You know, um, the borrower is just, I'm, I'm done. I'm not coming back. Like, you know, yeah. clean me up. Uh, yeah. And that has, I think, stockpiled into what you're seeing now from, a, from an advertising and marketing standpoint, the properties that you see out there. The other piece that, just to talk about that, the other piece that we are seeing is that a lot of our clients are not banks right now. They're other, the other you know, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. private equity, some direct owners, some estate stuff, you know, all, all of that stuff is trickling up. And that's partly um, people trying to read crystal balls and saying, this market feels too good. Yeah. You know? um, it feels like the right time for me to exit. Part of it is just demographics. It's just the age of people. You know, mm -hmm. I've owned this thing for 20 years. Uh, I don't want to own it anymore. My kids don't want it and I'm ready to, to get out. Yeah. So, I mean, we know, we know defaults are soaring and all that, um, and that leases aren't being paid. And I know you don't have a crystal ball, but presumably at some point someone pays the piper. Isn't that right? And when uh, do you have any sort of feel for, from, I know you're probably on the phone with workout folks all week, you know, banks all week, every, every, every week is just not hitting their desks yet, or it's all on pause until they figure out what's going on or what's happening with them? Uh, yes. So, I mean, some of it is uh, simply just pegged to the fact that 
even from a commercial standpoint, people are kind of benchmarking the Fannie Freddie, you know, moratoriums, mm -hmm. um, just so that they don't end up, you know, being massive red flags out there. Yeah. Um, the other piece is that all these, I mean, most of the COVID forbearances expire next week. And it will be, uh, and, and I, I know from talking to, I get better information from creditors' rights attorneys. Okay. Right? You know, because they're in, they're, they get the initial update. Um, right. Here's what we need you to move on. Here's the files, dot, 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 you know. Yeah. Um, and they're, so they're probably, depending on the jurisdiction, you know, three to six weeks ahead of, of engagement of, of me. Um, and so they're indicating that there feels like less patience from the lender side, mm -hmm. you know, that is, hey, you had your time um, and we're ready to give you more time, but why? Yeah. You know, give me a reason. Um, because at the end of this, if you, if you can't hit me a 10 week cash flow, that's starting to show some improvements, we're gonna have some problems. The other piece of that is that, that I, I think for our note investor in particular, it's an interesting moment because my sense is that there are what we would call kind of small business balance loans, not like small business administration loans, but you know, under a million dollar small business loans that there are gonna be some business owners who look at that and say, I'm not ready to write a check for 10,000, 100,000, a million dollars in order to bring myself current, to sign another note, to whatever. You know, I'm 63 years old mm -hmm. um, and I've done okay. My retirement's kind of okay. Um, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna dig another hole. And I think that some of those folks will exit they will just exit their industry and say i'm done and there's lenders who won't want to necessarily work out they won't want to take all those things to foreclosure and so i think that there are some you know that's that that may be low-hanging fruit for folks out there um, to say well i can go in and grab these things it's basically an asset purchase you know and i can own the note i can foreclose i can own the asset i can improve it i can put it on the market and i can sell it yeah Let's talk about who can, who should be in touch with you. Yeah. I think there's sort of a variety of, of folks, maybe we, commercial brokers, certainly, right? We, maybe you talk about how you might work with them. And if you're a lender, if you're a note investor, if you're a, a buyer, how should they get in touch with you and how do you work with those folks? Yeah, I mean, so uh, we do a lot of referral work for commercial brokers. We also do a lot of joint ventures with commercial brokers and everything from you know, full on deal splits to, you know, simple, hey, I have a lead for you. And if it ever comes through, um, what, let's let, please send me a, a you know, a, a percentage. Um, sure. And that's national, you work with all the time there. Yep, yeah, I mean, I'm, do, I'm doing, I actually have three transactions right now that were all referrals from, from, from brokers. Um, yeah, what, on which they get paid. When they yeah, I mean, and, and typically, I mean, just from that perspective, I, you know, I say, look, before you do that, either A, if you're getting signals from your potential client that there's a real time anxiety here, like it's time you should, we should think about working together. Um, two, before you do that massive price reduction, you know, uh, or take the offer from the invest, the local investor that everybody knows will buy anything at some price, like we should talk. I mean, we have had what's interesting is the response to properties is still astounding astounding right now there's a lot of cash um, out there still there's a lot of cash out there still yeah and now you're probably i'd imagine smelling a little blood in the water I mean, that's that's the feeling anyway yep yeah yep um for no buyer, i mean one of the things just to, to roll back is i mean you've asked about hey i want to buy the note can i do that i mean if you want to be a note purchaser pick up the phone and call the person that's that's listed on the website and say i want to be a note purchaser yeah you know um there are quite a few lenders who will exit there are some who by the time they get to that process are like too late yeah. you know i'm already i mean you know and so it's not not my not not worth the time to negotiate try to negotiate a note deal um, yeah. and you know, unfortunately, they've also been around the horn enough with people who are like, oh, I'm, I'm a note buyer, you know, and then 
you know, they come back and they get an offer that is, yeah, I'll make it up. It's a hundred, it's a million dollar asset and they get an offer for $135,000 and you're like, no, yeah, come on. Yeah. We, we thought we were real. Um, you know, and then um, is a no, is a no purchaser who's trying to work out assets um, sooner rather than later, typically. Um, the initial call is really a, a, a consultation. Um, and so it, we're always happy to just try to impart whatever knowledge we have. Um, you know, I've been doing this for 16 years um, and I, I love meeting new clients, um, but I like keeping clients better. Mm -hmm. um, and so historically my uh, repeat client is almost 90 percent we do a bunch of one-off relationships but a lot of our businesses repeat uh, and so and that's resounded in the fact that somebody calls and says hey here's what i'm dealing with i've got a guy who will do this or we can move toward a liquidation how am i going to do with the liquidation and my answer is i have no idea but let me tell you what i think so how should folks contact you if they if they think it's appropriate you can always find me on transon.com. That's with a Z, T R A N as in Nancy, Z as in zebra, O N.com. Um, my email is mcarry at transon.com. My last name is C A R E Y. My mobile number is 207 776 1936. And it unfortunately is always on. That's bold putting that number out on uh, the show because we reach a number of folks. So, it's always out there. so th thanks for doing that. Um, and yeah, and if you're a buyer, don't be afraid when you see that auction listing to reach out and, and have a conversation. I really can't emphasize that um, enough about how good a job Transon does of like laying out all the information they have for you. It doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to feel blind and scary and uh, and in the great unknown. If you if you're out there shopping uh, right now, pick up that phone. Um, and uh, they'll walk you through the, the whole process, help you get comfortable with how to buy um, and what it all looks like, right? Yeah. Definitely. No, I mean, that's what, you know, at the end of the day, that's how we uh, make transaction fees. So yep. happy to do it. Yep. All right. Thanks, Mike, for being here. It's Mike Carey from uh, Senior Vice President of Sales at uh, Transon Auction Properties. It's awesome having you on here again, and uh, maybe we can talk after Q1, and we'll see uh, what's happening then. I imagine it's going to be a little bit different story than it is here at the beginning of Q4, it's just a guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not predicting. How about that? Okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Hey, this is Breck Palumbo, founder of DistressPro.com. Are you ready to take your real estate or note business to the next level? We'll show you how to start sourcing discounted and distressed off-market deals direct from institutional sellers. Visit GoBankDirect.com today and learn how to take control of your deal flow and profit in any market. Go now to GoBankDirect.com.